folks, today is a good day because we had a brand new Indie World presentation from Nintendo this morning going over what I counted as 17 games coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2024. So today I wanted to talk about the event, recap the events, and really just give my opinions on everything we saw today from Nintendo's Indie Partners. Let's get into it. All right, so first up we have Little Kitty Big City from Double Dagger Studios. This is a game where you play as a cat in a big city uh, doing quests and essentially just helping out other animals and I believe people as well uh, and there's a bunch of like cat achievements as they call them in the game to do you're basically just exploring this open environment doing things as a cat which honestly that's a pretty compelling argument as a game pitch right you know just playing as a cat is inherently fun people love stray a couple of years ago so it's nice to see another cozy vibes based cat game stray is stray's a little depressing if i'm being honest so it's nice to see a more light-hearted cat game coming to nintendo switch we now have a release date for it though may 9th very soon we don't have long to wait now after that we got a really surprising announcement from way forward and atari very weird to see this return so yara's revenge yara's revenge is an atari 2600 game and there is a revival from way forward for some reason so this is like a 2d action platformer game where you play as this anime girl it doesn't really look like a lot of way forward's other games because it's a lot of 3d models normally they make sprite based games at least from what i've seen but yeah, we have a new game from WayForward and Atari, Yars Rising, uh, releasing this year. It looks cool. It's just really weird <laughs> to see a new Yars game. Did anybody think that Yars was about to become a franchise? I certainly didn't. But, you know, some stealth elements here, a lot of hacking. I like the, the futuristic vibe for this game. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely check it out when it comes out to Nintendo Switch later this year. Next up, this one looked pretty interesting, Refined Self, the personality test game. So this has really nice pixel art, very nice like color, uh, uh, you know, kind of scheming going on here. But this is a game where you basically just perform a bunch of actions. You know, you can fish, you can, you know, there's a bunch of dialogue options, there's a crane game you can play. Um, and by the end of it, you get a personality, you, you get designated a personality. It's a personality test game, which I think is interesting as a concept. However, in the trailer, they're like, play through the game again and do different actions to get a different personality. I feel like that's not the point, right? The point is you play it once and you get your personality. But I guess there's some replay value there if you want to go through and get all the different endings and have all the different personalities. But uh, for me, this one is something I, I probably won't play, but I do really like the art style. And this one is releasing in summer as a timed console exclusive on Nintendo Switch. After that, we got to see Sticky Business from Spell Garden Games. This is available right now as a timed console exclusive alongside the Plan With Me DLC. So I'm guessing this game was already out on Steam. But basically, the premise is you run a sticker shop and you make stickers and you have all of these different elements. Like, I think they said like 400 elements or something. And you just make stickers and sell them to customers. There's like interconnected stories with the customers and like you get like, you know, a story through your inbox basically. Basically, definitely another game that's fitting that cozy game vibe. But honestly, as someone who doesn't really play the cozy game genre, this one seemed pretty unique. Like, I, I really enjoyed Unpacking, for example, and A Little to the Left was pretty cool as well. This gives me similar vibes to that, and it just feels pretty unique. Like, I don't think I've seen a game based on, like, stickers and having a sticker shop before. Um, so I thought this one looked pretty cool. And it's available right now, so maybe I'll go check it out uh, after I record this video, actually. It's definitely something that I think my girlfriend would also enjoy. Next up, we had a very exciting announcement. Anton Blast is coming to the Nintendo Switch from Summit Sphere. It's releasing on November 12th, and there's a demo available now. It is a timed console exclusive. For everybody that's been asking for Pizza Tower on Switch, which I do agree should have been in this indie world, play this game also. Um, I haven't played it myself, but looking at the trailer, I mean, this looks like such a good Wario Land-like game um, that, honestly, I'm really excited for this. Like, I, I know it's on PC already, but as a time console exclusive on Switch coming out in November, this is something I will definitely be checking out. This was a highlight of the presentation for me. As someone who, I'd seen, like, the art for this game before, but I'd never seen it in motion, this game looks freaking fantastic. So, I'm very excited for this. Kind of interesting to see Nintendo get this as a time console exclusive. In fact, that's something I think is... Uh, kind of intriguing about this entire presentation. There was a lot of time console exclusives, which does make me question, you know, Nintendo strategy this year a little bit. And like, it, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. But yeah, Anton Blast, uh, demo available today as well. Like I mentioned, that feels like a long time between uh, release date and demo releasing, especially for a game that is old. It has been out on PC, I think, for at least a year. Um, but still, Anton Blast coming later this year to Nintendo Switch looks fantastic if you are a fan of Wario Land. 
Next up, they showed Valley Peaks from Tub Club and those awesome guys. This is a first-person rock climbing adventure. There's like frog characters in it with this really unique pastel kind of uh, art style. I thought this one also looked pretty cool, although it's something I might not end up playing. You know, there's like boat racing and stuff in it. Nice little bit of variety. And yeah, like I said, that, that art style is really nice. Uh, this is coming later in 2024. After that, we got a pretty big one. I know a lot of people have been waiting for a release date on Lorelei and the, the Laser Eyes. This is coming from Samogo and Annapurna. This is from the developers of Sayonara Wild Hearts and Year Walk. Um, that is what I would say they're most known for. And it's releasing on May 16th, so not long to wait at all. After that, they showed a game I had never heard of before from Future Friends. This is Europa. And it seems to be this open world kind of platforming adventure game with this really nice art style. Uh, my main takeaway from the trailer was awesome music, like a lot of piano. Uh, definitely, you know, I don't want to say this to a lot of these open world games nowadays, but definitely giving me some Breath of the Wild vibes, I will not lie. But yeah, this one looks pretty cool coming out later this year, and once again, there is a demo available now. This next one really surprised me, although in retrospect, I realized it's not it's not as exciting. So this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate from Super Evil Megacorp. It's releasing in July 2024 as a timed console exclusive. I thought this was a new game. It is not. This was on Apple Arcade. So on the one hand, it's very exciting to see more Apple Arcade stuff, you know, get away from Apple Arcade. However, it is an old game. It's also interesting, though, because it's a timed console exclusive which once again, I feel like Nintendo's really pushing that this year. But this is a TMNT co-op roguelike. Honestly, as someone who didn't grow up with TMNT, I thought this looked pretty slick. I, I thought this looked like a lot of fun. I love the way the turtles look. Um, a game I really enjoyed wasn't a roguelike, but similar vibes was Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on the Nintendo Switch, and I thought this kind of reminded me of that. So this is one I might actually end up checking out, even though I don't have a strong connection to the Turtles. Cat Quest 3 got a new trailer as well as a release date coming out on August 8th. There is a demo available now. This is a series of games I've always wanted to try out. I think the art style is really nice, really pops with the, uh, the 2D sprites and like the 3D overworld environments. But this is the third game from the Gentle Bros in the Cat Quest series. Obviously, there's a lot of fans, and it does pretty well if they're on the third one already, so um, definitely exciting to see this one here. After that, we had a game called Stitch, and this is one I had never heard of before. At first, I wasn't quite sure what was going on. It's just like an embroidery game where you're making patterns. However, it is Picross. This is a Picross game based on embroidery, based on stitching patterns, and I think that's actually a fantastic idea. I haven't played a Picross game in quite a long time, but back in my, my 3DS days, I played those Picross e-games, um, and this is more Picross, but with a really nice level of, of budget, I would say, or like really high quality polish where, you know... There's actually, you're, you're actually doing interesting things in this. Not to, not to, you know, discredit Picross. Picross is great, but this is like Picross with like a, almost like a Nintendo flair, funnily enough. Like if there's, there's a really nice quality to this game, having the Picross be um, essentially, you know, essentially Picross. It's not exactly one-to-one -one with Picross, but having it be you uh, doing embroidery and, and stitching these patterns. I think this looks really cute. They're doing like weekly patterns and, and tons of stuff every day. I think there's like daily challenges and stuff. So tons of content in this game. If you like puzzle games akin to this, um, this is one I think I might check out also available today though. So this is out right now as a console exclusive. So very cool stuff. After that, we had a bit of a sizzle reel. So we had Bzzz by Cinemax. This is a robot kind of action game. I was getting Mega Man vibes from it, but really nice pixel art. I thought this one looked pretty cool. This one is releasing in summer 2024. After that, we had Shim from Extra Nice. I had never heard of this one. Basically, the idea is you're um, you're playing as a frog and you have to move in the shadows. So like if someone's walking by, you have to jump into their shadow, wait for them to walk to another area, you know, jump out of their shadow into another shadow. Pretty unique concept. That is releasing on July 18th. We got another look at Animal Well from Big Mode Games as well as Shared Memory. This is the, the video game donkey game for those unaware. I think this looks really cool. I need to see more of it and I need to get some reviews, but uh, definitely one I have my eyes on. Then we had Duck Detective The Secret Salami from Happy Broccoli Games. It's a game where you're a duck detective. It's releasing May 23rd. What more could you ask for? And to end off our sizzle reel, we got another quick look at another Crab's Adventure from Agro Crab, releasing on April 25th. Pre-orders available now. Uh, that's the Dark Souls Crab game that's been uh, kind of percolating for a couple of years now. That one looks super interesting. And then for our final announcement, was it Silk Song? No, no, it was not Silk Song. A lot of people were expecting Hollow Knight Silk Song. Even I was kind of. Uh, based on just the vibes of like all the ratings happening, a lot of people were expecting Silk Song to be in this indie world. It was not. However, we did get a very exciting game announcement, in my opinion. In fact, before the stream even started, because I was streaming my reactions, you can go check them out on my channel. I said I would love to see a new SteamWorld game because while SteamWorld Dig 2 and SteamWorld Quest are some of my favorite eShop games on the Nintendo Switch, 
I feel like SteamWorld has kind of lost its footing lately. I mean, SteamWorld Quest, that was like six years ago at this point. Um, and then we had SteamWorld Build last year, but that isn't really the type of game I want to play, at least not on the Switch anyway. But my my wish for a return to form for SteamWorld has been answered because we are getting SteamWorld Heist 2 from Thunderful on August 8th. Same day as Cat Quest 2. Maybe they should, uh, maybe one of those should move out of the way a little bit there. But yeah, this is really exciting. SteamWorld Heist was one of the premier eShop uh, indie games on the 3DS and Wii U back in the day. So it's really cool to see a sequel. There's a ton of new aspects of this game. Like there's a whole job system now. There's like, I think they said, I think they might've said the word hundreds of new weapons that you can equip. They have this new real-time combat where you're in a ship and you're sailing around the sea which looks really cool um this definitely feels like the biggest budget steamroll game we've gotten and I'm, I'm happy to see a like i said a, a kind of return to form not not the shade steamroll to build i'm sure that game is fun this feels like what we've been waiting for if you are a fan of the steamroll franchise now the reality is we're waiting for steamroll dick 3 however I will, I will also gladly take this, right? If this does lead us on the path of getting SteamWorld Dig 3 eventually, I am all for it because it looks fantastic. But that was the Indie World for April 2024. Overall, I think it was a pretty good show. Uh, there's a couple games that I'm interested in, a couple that I, you know would like to think I'll play. You know, like Cat Quest, like I mentioned, that's a game I would like to play. And TMNT is a game I would like to play. But the reality is, will I? Will I though? Out of this presentation, the only things I'm like for sure playing are Anton Blast and SteamWorld Heist 2. I would like to check out Animal Well, though. I would like to try out Europa. That looked pretty neat. Sticky Business, I also thought looked pretty interesting as well. Yars Rising. So I would say there's a little bit of something for everyone here um, in terms of indie announcements. And, you know, previously Steam exclusive games coming to console for the first time. I would say it was a pretty good show overall. No mind-breaking announcements like Silk Song coming to a Nintendo Switch, like imminently. You know, I think that's I think that's where the, a lot of the disappointment is coming for a lot of people when it comes to this indie world. But once again, always keep those expectations in check. You can you can be hyped to the moon, but always realize like maybe that's not going to happen. I was expecting Pizza Tower, though. Like I will now I, I fully I fully question where that game is that that game should already be on Switch if we're being honest. So that is 17 indie games announced for the Nintendo Switch or uh, shown again for the Nintendo Switch, I should say, because not all of these were new announcements. But let me know in the comments down below which of these games are you interested in checking out for yourself. If you are interested in any of them and let me know why. Did you think this was a lackluster showcase or did you think it was pretty good or even great? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, subscribe here for more Nintendo Switch news, reviews, coverage, all of that stuff. I would appreciate it. And until next time, folks, peace.